Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Cyrus, and welcome to the Darkness Podcast. Today we have a special guest, and I'm really excited to introduce him to you. We've mentioned him in a previous podcast, but today he's going to be telling us about his channel, his growth in social media, and everywhere he's going, as well as what he's doing for this upcoming year. Before we get into that, I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for stopping by. But also, make sure you support us by checking out all the social media links, not only for myself, but also for our special guest, which will be in the description of this podcast. And without further ado, our special guest for this week is none other than That Angry Scott. Angry Scott, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are, what you're doing, your socials, where we can find you, and yeah, anything with that. Hello, my name is Danny Ray Scott. Uh, I'm 19 year old, and so I'm the cheapskate person of the internet right now. And uh, I've been doing this for about four to five months. Uh, I really appreciate Cyrus for having me on this podcast. It really is uh, very, very nice to be on here. It's the first time I'm doing one of these things, so excuse me if I ever botch anything. Uh, my, you can, my socials, uh, you can follow me basically on Twitter, Danny Ray Scott, and Instagram, same name. That's really how I go about it. And obviously, I'm, I'm a, well, I'm going to discuss what I am doing as a YouTuber because you know, this is already going off to a great start and I didn't just screw that up. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> so, uh, you also have a Twitch, right? You're streaming on Twitch as well. I do. I do. I do. Okay, um, so, I, I, Twitch, twitch.tv slash angry Scott just hit over 200 followers, which I'm very, very proud about. And it's, uh, so far things have been going pretty good. Good, man. So tell me about this. When you first started this, were you really excited about the prospect of getting in social media or is there a little bit of like a you know, nervous energy? Were you scared? What, what hesitations did you have? I was hesitant about, you know, when I joined social media, how people would uh, react to my content. And I kind of came into it willy nilly, not really caring about what I did. And I kind of just happened to just be there and just I just kind of went with the flow, really. You know, and it was my first time doing it. <clears throat> and I actually um, started to get uh, somewhat supportive traction from friends and family members who saw this content and actually thought it was pretty good, uh, especially for my socials. So when I started joining social media, I kind of was just chill about it. I didn't really care about what I posted, but then it, um, things started popping off in a sense and i was really happy about my response that i was getting so i thought you know maybe i should take this one step further um and so on and so on i started contacting a lot of people for better advice i talked to you for example uh for where i'm going at right now and one of the just basically how to get started and actually do this more as this job aspect that i i dreamed about because when i when i when i was younger um one of the first things that i would do when i would come home from school is i would go in my bed and I just pull up YouTube and I start watching, you know, YouTube just and stuff and just laughing and just, you know, not stop laughing. It was, it was really, it, that kind of, in, that, that kind of stuff just kind of led to what happened right now and what's going on right now in my life, especially with um, doing YouTube and everything and all these content creations and social media definitely plays a factor in all that kind of stuff. Okay. And so with all of that and everything that you have, you know, starting five months ago, you had support from friends and family you know, you obviously had to have these kind of like inspiration role models, these people that you're looking towards that you, you kind of looking up to kind of maybe aiming your content towards. Tell me about some of those. What were the people that you wanted to model your content after? Or maybe their their approach to how they did that. Who, who would those people be to you? So when I like I said, when I was younger, um, one of the the biggest youtubers i found at that time was vanoss gaming and i i would watch his stuff and i would just rerun watch it over and over again and never stop laughing and crying of laughter i would watch him i watch people like pewdiepie i watch gaming lemon and i know like which is a lesser known youtuber i watch all these youtubers that did so much game but those three are the major kind of pinpoints that i see which kind of you know inspired me like hey these people are making people laugh on the internet and playing video games at the same time. This is something I want to do. This is something I really want to do in my life. And 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 I'm already and I and literally where I started <clears throat> is is nowhere probably comparable to them. It, it maybe or not. You know, I I used to my first recordings I had when I was you know starting out YouTube. That's five four months ago. Was literally my PS4, the PS4 Share Factory editing options recorded off there used a 40 dollars microphone and i just edited it from there for like the first good 10 videos 10 10 9 8 videos i just did it off the ps4 and i thought it was pretty good for what it was but clearly it was not in a lot of people um and those kind of inspirations because i basically modeled those videos after 
Vanoss because he was he was one of the the biggest these views my he's my favorite youtuber still is and um that's what i inspired to be when i was not only younger but it was probably one of the sole factors and like any other youtuber as well that i watched like i previously mentioned such as a lesser known youtuber but also kind of a big youtuber he's got two million subscribers his name is the gaming limit he's a british guy and he's, he's super hilarious and um that was the kind of stuff i watched when i was younger like i said every time i come home from school watch it and it just was like wow people do this for a living i want to do this for a living right and so when you think about those people you know and, and what your content looks like compared to them you know you seeing them as a role model where you are today i think you just crested what 300 subscribers is that right i just did yeah uh that actually happened about a uh, three days ago That's uh fantastic. and I, I i could tell you what actually happened that too um I was on a Twitch live stream and we were doing a charity stream for the unfortunate recent passing of a wrestler that was near and dear. Cause I'm a big wrestling fan. Um, I always have been, uh, and the wrestler Brody Lee or John Huber passed away and I was really heartbroken by it. So I wanted to do something to help out as much as I can. And, um, I decided to do a charity stream for the American lung association to sort of like do that. And I just did it off a wrestling thing. That's and, awesome, uh, man. there was this guy, um, I think his name was Trent and he did, he does like a lot of WWE stuff and, he rated me with like 28 viewers and then i was like are you kidding me what and then they saw my youtube and then they subscribed and i was like oh my god and i cried on stream i was like there's no way that just happened that day because i i was like so enthusiastic not for the fact that i just got traction but for the fact i know people not only supported my cause but were there to laugh with me that's right probably that's so good man and the, that same thing that feeling of doing a charity stream and seeing people support that you know, some people might think that's selfish, like, oh, no, I'm getting recognition. But no, that idea of giving awareness to something larger than yourself is just powerful. And I'm sure you felt that. I did. Um, and I had a little bit of a more passionate feel when I did that charity stream towards the American Lung Association. My family has my family has like lung issues and I happen to had a lot of lung problems when I was a child. Uh, thank God I actually don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. But um, when back then, it, like I knew like it sucked having a lot of these kind of problems with the lung things. I had to be put on breathing treatments and all this kind of stuff. So uh, usually when and I looked at that, I was like, I'm doing this not only just for Huber, I'm doing this for a group of people that need this kind of awareness. And that's what really made me, that's what I feel like I did a good thing that day. Right. That's, that's so awesome. But when you, when you look at your content, you have 300, you have 300 subscribers, right? And you, mm -hmm. you're growing so quickly in, compared to even my growth. It's, it's just wonderful to see, but you look at the content you're making at 300 subscribers and the content that gaming lemon, you said had 2 million subscribers, Yeah. you know, that comparison, how do you feel like, you know, as an inspiration, what can you do to get your content to his level, to that level? And honestly, I don't know. And I think it's best. I don't know because I don't know what he went through and how he got his level. And I don't know how I went to that level. I just know that I'm going to maybe look at stuff for inspirations and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability, all for the sole purpose of making people laugh. And I know that's the satisfaction I get out of it because he made people like me laugh. I'm going to do the favor of making people laugh as well in that same aspect, not only with his humor, which I have also touched up with in that kind of humor, but also with the, uh, you know, the, the aspect of, of editing. That's, that's how he really got me was his, his amazing edits and everything and how funny he was as an individual. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I feel like I'm, I, I have the confidence and ability to make people laugh like he did. I'm going to go do the same thing. Right. That's so good. And touching on that, your latest video, bro, like that, those edits, <laughs> if you haven't checked out his channel, this brony video that he just did, <laughs> Regardless of when you're listening to this podcast, that video alone broke me. It just it just shut me down. Anyway, go check out his YouTube and go see that. Like after this podcast, oh, go to man. his YouTube. You have to go see it. That had to be fun to record, man. Dude, I honestly I, I thank you. I appreciate it. But the the funniest thing about that whole thing, there was more to it than that was. Unfortunately, I didn't get a message from the I felt like that was three dollars well spent, honestly. Yeah. I, and they, but then they charged me twenty four dollars later, and then I had to go message them and get a refund back. But I didn't care. I was like, "You guys provided me thirteen minutes worth of content. You think I care?" Yeah. I thought it was great. If I if I had money to pay, and I knew that was the content, I would have paid to see that video. It was it was oh good. my dude, it was, good. it was it was beyond cursed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was so good, man. <laughs> it was amazing. 
All right, so let's let's move forward. Things that like make this stuff possible. Like what we're doing right now, we both have microphones, we both have computers, situations that allow us to make the content we're making right now. I want you to touch on from your experience, you said you're five months in, what does the needs that you might need for content be content creation, such as equipment, consoles, what, what kind of monetary investment is is needed to get into something what like what you're doing, like what I'm doing? Is that different for everyone, or just let's talk about your experience? How do you, what do you think about that? It is is majorly different for everyone because, like I said, when I first started doing my videos back for, like the beginning month, I literally used a PlayStation, the PS4, the Share Factory thing with the 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 lowest lowest edits you could probably make, and I just I literally took a school Chromebook and I exported some of the stuff in a different way and put that on a hard drive and put it into the PlayStation. And then I would just basically take all that video. I didn't really do that much. I didn't do it that often. I did it for like just songs and non-copyrighted stuff as best as I can. But then when I got my laptop in, I was like, Hey, I can now use this kind of stuff to, you know, just get this non-copyrighted music, plug it in, you know, like, you know, these Kevin McAloy style stuff and just put it in there and like, Hey, I do. And, and honestly, it actually went really well, whether they're not better than I expected. But now I'm sitting over here with a laptop because the one thing I know I need is a computer because, um, you know, I've been purchasing parts, which we're going to be building. Uh, we're going to be right. building that on stream that's and right. we're going to be building that. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and I'm, I'm, go I'm working on that right now. I'm actually getting some parts in as well. And I'm waiting for that good old stimulus check to come in. Uh, <laughs> Um, and I, I'm going to be buying those parts. I'm really excited to build this thing. Um, I, I, so far, I have I used your videos as examples because I didn't know when I wanted to actually like the, the day I knew I wanted to like start doing this full time and like actually like start striving for that. I actually looked at your videos and I was like, I wonder what I can use to actually start. And then here you are with, you know, recommending the $60 camera with 4K, 30 FPS. And I use, I'm using that right now for my videos. I, and it's, it's awesome. And then I'm using this microphone I got off Amazon for like 72 bucks. And I'm looking at these two uh, equipments I got, and I'm using a laptop that is originally for school, which I'm still using for school. But I'm using this to like, not only edit and sometimes record on surfic, you know, certain games. It's honestly like I feel like I'm going in the right direction already with the lowest form of equipment I can. So you can make good content with the lowest form of equipment you can, but you can always go better and better being like you can strive for better. And I'm definitely going to strive for better. And I know I can because I, mean, I have like some equipment I'm going to keep, but I'm also going to improve, a.k.a. by building a computer, perhaps probably maybe get a better webcam down the road. You know, that's what I'm looking for, even a capture card, all this kind of stuff. So I know what I'm what I'm using right now equipment wise isn't so much of the best of the best, but it's the good of the good that will get me by until then. Right. And so much of content creation to kind of touch on a point you said there, so much of content creation has nothing to do with the actual piece of technology that you have but the person that's behind the technology. And I think what holds people up, and we've talked about this a couple times, is people think the technology makes the content. And you're, you're a perfect example of saying, like, you had a PS4 and you had a school Chromebook. The, the technology that you had in your hand and you were able to make content. You're able to make content with what you had in it and then expand as it went on, not making you know, very hasty purchases, but thinking about the things that are going to expand your content in a positive way, not as a, a want necessarily, but a need so that you can continue improving the amount of content you're putting out. And I think you've been really smart about how you've planned this out and let your content really get some growth before making a big monetary investment. I think that's awesome, man. I think, well, it's obviously what I had to do until the time of being, uh, cause that's what, and I think it, it was for my best bet. I was like, let's see what I can do with this. All right. Good videos are coming out, but I can do better. And, but they're still quality. Cause I know that maybe my own personality may fit the content, but maybe not the editing needed. Then I switched over to where I'm at even like here, better content, loving it. And, and, and Hey, I don't even, I, I it, say, I don't even need to get a computer. You know, I could still stick to doing this and we'll see what happens down the road, but that's not what I want to do. I do want to actually see what I can do with making that monitor investment because this is the next big step I'm doing. And I know when I make that big step, I'm going to do better because I'm, I'm confident in myself and my abilities, not only as a content creator, but you know, as a human trying to just make people laugh for a living, I know I have that ability and I'm going to prove it. 
Right. And that's good. And let's, let's lean on that because what you just ended that with is the growth of you as a content creator and the, the, you know, the confidence that you have in yourself. So there's several things that come with that, you know, and what I want to do is talk about the different types of structures to learn as a content creator. You know, your biggest resource is yourself. And if you don't take the time to educate yourself, to put yourself in a, in a position of growth and a positive position to where you can create this content, you know, it, it kind of like, I don't know, it just kind of puts a weight on you, maybe a cap. So talk about that. What are the different types of structures that you, that you think every content creator should take some time to learn, to grow and be successful and to educate themselves for? So uh, and that's pretty good because uh, I've never been asked that. So I feel like what you should start learning is not only what you just mentioned yourself. You should obviously learn who you are, not only as an individual, but what you're trying to appeal to. What kind of content are you looking for? Are you looking to do how to videos? Are you looking to do gaming videos? Are you looking to do cooking? I, you know, I don't care if you're looking to do that kind of specific content. You should and you feel that you have the need and the ability to do that, then go for it. Nothing's holding you back because certainly nothing hold, held me back. And that's what I feel like anyone has the opportunity to do with that, with that. There, there's no boundaries with this. You know, there are there's there's no boundaries when it comes for your strive and your goal to go and, and make something. So if you want it, if you were like really good at cooking and all your friends, family say, hey, you should definitely try to do it. Go do it. You know, you have that ability and it may revolve around maybe you as personality, but it definitely is. You know, next thing is after starting to look you know, at what you want to do and that, you know, you can do start looking at the content specifically in those categories that you want to do, figure out what games you want to do or what kind of food you want to do or what kind of, you know, learning tools you want to do. And then just go from there, start learning more things about SEO. You know, that's how that actually probably should be last. I'm sorry. Uh, skip that one. Actually, you should start learning how to like use the technology you're using to record and and figure that out you know um and and for me as as a gamer and as someone who who uses this to try to make people laugh i learned how to edit my stuff on you know and you recommended to me this it was a program to mint resolve which is free i i i just heard that it was free and the first time i recommended and downloaded it i i've learned everything on my own i didn't have to learn from it and you know, granted you could use tutorials but i i learned it on my own uh, and I, um, <clears throat> I actually most was really happy about learning it on my own because I know that I could probably mold this into my image of what I want to do to make people laugh. And I most certainly did. And I'm happy I did because, you know, you can spend hours on tutorials, but if it's not the kind of stuff you really are looking for, then you're never really going to strive for it, you know? And then that's the kind of structure is basically learning your editing points and le learning what you find is good and funny and or whatever that you think is entertaining that other people will find entertaining. And then obviously, you know, the other minor stuff like SEOs and thumbnails and all that should be, I think, at the end personally, because I think that should be the last struggle, the little finishing touch on your on your content creation cake, really. Right. And both of those things literally are some of the most important things that gets you the clicks, but are sometimes also the easiest things. I'm not saying that thumbnails and titles are easy, but in care in comparison to like all of the editing that you put into a video, it's easier compared to that. Unless you take some time and really think about your keyword and what that's going to do. But everything you just said is so true. Taking a step back and reflecting on everything that you want to do, choosing the right content that, that complements you and what you naturally do well. And sometimes this leads into a situation where you've done the same thing so much that you start to get burnt out and you have to shift gears a little bit. And one of the things I want to kind of shift to and allude to after this is kind of burnout, but also motivation. I think everyone is a content creator, you know, you're five months in, um, and, and, and I've been doing this for almost two years or um, it's like a year and a half coming up on two years. And I had that moment of burnout and needed that motivation. And I don't, this isn't about me. So I want to talk about your motivation. You know, what gets you motivated? What keeps you going? Have you experienced burnout yet? What does that look like? And, uh, just go ahead and tell the audience about your position on that. So I have experienced that um, to start out, and, and I think it's completely normal that everyone does experience that because um, so basically when, like I said before, I, not only do I do gaming videos, I do other kind of videos to just test the water. I'm going through a learning phase right now, you know, like 
I can put this in the phase of saying the birth of a young of some sort of young offspring. You learn in this stage before you start getting to your big guns. Like I, I'm, I'm been doing good on my gaming videos, but I'm doing IRL videos that are also kind of doing decently good. I'm testing the waters. I'm seeing what people like. I'm seeing what my analytics are doing, and I'm testing these kind of things to see what I think will not only work for me entertainment wise, but also work for other people entertainment. It's the learning phase. I'm, I'm testing what's going around right now. And it's certainly benefiting me well because I'm learning. I'm learning at what's going on. I'm learning, learning what people like. I'm learning what people don't like. I'm learning what's getting me traction. I'm learning at all these kind of things. And uh, with that, like you said, does come out the burnout. Yeah, a couple months ago when I was uploading these videos and they were really, you know, pretty good content in my eyes they weren't getting that many views and I, I i experienced these just these downsides of like why am i doing this if no one's going to view it or have barely a laugh on it i felt like it wasn't worth it and in certainly times i felt like i just wanted to stop doing what i was doing because um and i and i still get those sometimes when i see these videos you know hey my like let's say that brony video i just uploaded didn't really do good for the view wise but i know what i'm i learned from my mistakes and i learned from all these kind of things to just advance forward and make myself better so when i look at these kind of videos i'm like i can do better now because i know it's going to take time and i know i have to keep doing what i'm doing because I, i'm not going to get this right off the bat in the span of you know just a couple of, of months no it's going to take a year and i understand that i understand that now but it took me a while to, to understand that and i think that was a really big downside because i wasn't a not really the best of places a couple months ago and uh, the motivation that keeps me doing what i'm doing when i have these burnouts is is my girlfriend she's she's the most supportive out of anyone that in my life right now that supports me when it comes to doing YouTube because she not only I, I I literally will when I upload a video and I have the time to be with her I literally sit down with her and we just watch it and we laugh together because I know seeing her laugh gets me the best joy of my life because I know it's like the happiest moment just to see her laugh because I know that's what I want to do is make people laugh so that's the motivation I get that that kind of will fuel me for a long time and seeing other people laugh makes me just it just gives me the best feeling and that's that makes me like when every time i see someone laugh or comment on a video or watch it saying oh my god i died laughing or oh my god hey this was really funny i love this part right here and it gets memed on and stuff you know and people just start laughing it gives me the biggest joy of my life and i just it's, it's such an exuberant feeling just seeing these people laugh at something that i'm trying to do and make people laugh at my you know me being stupid or whatever it, it certainly gives me the motivation to keep doing what when i know people are, are just having a good time I think that's awesome, man. And I think going back to that point of like having someone who's there for you to kind of keep you motivated, someone who's like, you know, encouraging you, supporting you. I think that's so awesome, especially since you have that in your girlfriend. I think that's wonderful, man. Yeah, and I, we've been dating for nearly two years. And um, I told her when I first started doing this, I was actually doing like a specific thing in a gaming community um, that really I wasn't happy with doing because I did it just because friends were in it. And then I just started to go off on my own thing and started like doing this YouTube. I told her, I looked at her and I was like, you know, I think I want to do this and see where this goes. And she's like, well, you know, whatever you do, I support you. And I was like, you know, I think that's what is good and i and i think it's like you know i think what you're doing it, it, it just gave me a, a really giddy feeling you know that's all and then good. now here i am five months later she loves every single one of my videos she's laughing with me and i just i and other people are laughing this just makes me feel so much more joyous as a human being to know what i do and what i want to do now is make more people laugh and make more people have a good time that's what i know i i can do and that's all i really focused or care about that's awesome. So to get to this point, you know, a lot of people will kind of rely on themselves, you know, their, their options, the things that they know, the things that they have, but sometimes you realize that, you know, some things are above your level of knowledge or the things that you have around you. So obviously there are times that you're going to reach out to people that are going to help you or kind of just assist you, give you, give you kind of an assist. So has anyone done that for you? You know, talk to me about them. What have they helped you with? And, you know, what's what's do you want to shout them out? Anything like that? Oh, well, you obviously will be the first one because I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for you. Because honestly, with you, your videos, you're you giving these 
you're giving tutorials on how to help out with young content creation just helps me out a lot. So yes, you you do deserve the rub on that one because I can I, I can't give a percentage. Like the most of this kind of stuff as to people who have helped me have been you, but there's been others. I've been looking at you know these. I've been searching of things like how to improve, you know, this on YouTube. And I've been looking at Alpha Gaming, you know, and how that uh, Harris, uh, Harris Elder and how he was expressing how you should start doing and how he started with, you know, content creation. I look at um, my friends who try to boost my moral or anything. I look at my moderators who are also my friends, you know, like, you know, Zek and, and Colin, who are, are good friends of mine. They, they boost my morale uh, and tell me how much they... They, they see the, what I should do and, and I will even go into their discord chats and be like, hey, can you guys, what do you guys think of this and this and how do you think I should improve, you know? Multiple people play a factor into any one of that and I can't really give all the names out. I mean, obviously you are one of them and like I said, my friends and there has been a lot of other people like this guy named Savion who's also a discord uh, mod in my discord chat as well. He he helps me out a lot with teaching me how to like, you know, these techno tech stuff and I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool. And then when it comes to mostly my content creation um, and help me out with that, obviously you are a big help with that. So that's basically all I could really say on that. Well, I appreciate that. I wasn't baiting for a, a shout out, by the way. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, being, I, I, I mean, appreciate honest, it, man. Honest, honest, honest to goodness. That is the truth right there. No, no shout out, no baiting, no nothing. That's actually true. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, just to kind of plug that, if you if you haven't um, already checked out the description, I am going to put Angry Scott's uh, Discord server there. It's an awesome place full of people that are just ready to game. And he all the time, especially if you're just wanting to get in on his content in any way, say you enjoy it. Um, he does recording sessions all the time and asks people to jump in. And I'm sure that, you know, when it gets to a point that you can be a pop possibly be a part of one of his videos it's just it's a wonderful time over there man join the angry armada and be stupid with me that's all i can say <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so okay so tell me about this thinking about your videos thinking about what you're doing how do you appeal to your audience what is your audience right now my audience is at the minute just the people who either one in enjoy having a good laugh, people who are in search of comedy and having a good laugh and trying to join that YouTube channel and watch them grow in the sense of joining the family. If that makes sense, because I consider people who watch my videos, the, you know, the angry mod, I consider them family because they know what goes on. They know how my videos are. They know everything. And they, ch they jump my discord. They chill with me and they talk to me. They just know it. That's the thing that people are looking for are the people who are looking for that kind of, youtuber to, to to kind of just in a sense relate to it right, almost right. and um but i'm also appealing to people who who really are interested in these cool edits and you know they want to see these like wow this is funny you know wow this guy is crazy you know or wow this i i think this guy doing this video game stuff that's that's what i'm appealing to i'm, I'm appealing to <sighs> I'm appealing to like people who want to watch a daily night show in a sense, not like that, you know, but like maybe not the best comparison in the world, but like in, in a sense, people who want to have that good laugh. That's all I'm looking for is appealing to an audience who wants a good laugh that just so happen to be people who like video games and or other content. And I know that my channel is good for that. Yeah. Cause I know that a lot and, and other people's channels are good for that. But the thing that separates me from those I feel is I'm young. And, and 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 granted, there are younger content creators. They're, they're not I like that, that, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 younger. Uh, not like in the sense of age wise. I meant in the sense of I just started, right, and okay. I feel like people who who like I know that's kind of a double entendre because people are going to be looking at that and they're going to be like, oh, you're okay, you're calling me old. No, Ooh, I mean man. I mean it. I mean it like you calling know, us boomers over here. I appreciate I'm it. calling you boomers. I am a boomer. I'm 19. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Well, so me being such a young, a young content creator, um, I just said young. It's just me being such a young content creator who just started five months ago, and I'm already learning these things that other YouTubes are acquire, uh, bigger YouTubers are acquiring to their videos. Makes me feel like I can be included in one of those. Maybe not yet with you know analytics wise but i know personality wise i'm that guy you should de like I'm, I'm that i'm not saying like just to pat myself on the back i feel like i'm that guy that you can come to and talk to about anything and i feel like and i will listen and i will listen to my viewers and i will listen to my audience and i will listen to what everyone's saying and, and i will i will just try to relate to the best i can and just have a good laugh that's what i'm appealing to i think, I think i'm doing a good job of that that's amazing, man. And I have to I have to applaud you on that because your content, it really is. Once people finally grab your channel above the, the current audience you have, by the way, if you are a part of the Ingur Armada and you already enjoy his content, you're supporting a fantastic set of content. And it's 
the edits are just top notch, man. I really enjoy it. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. So, so let's, let's wrap up with a question. Um, I've got two more with you, but here's one. Why do you angry Scott do what you do? I'm, I'm doing the things I do because it's kind of can go back to the motivation point. I, I find a certain happiness in my soul when I know that this is going to sound emo, uh, when I know that someone else is, uh, <laughs> yeah, because when I said soul, it is like that when it, I feel like I'm appealing to an audience when I'll put it like this, I'll sum it like this instead of just rambling on about him. Every day I make someone laugh makes my day. I can't go a day without making someone laugh because I know if I don't do that, I don't have a good day. Because I know if I'm making someone's day a little bit better by making them laugh, I have a good day in turn. And that's nice. how I'm going to continue being for the rest of my life. I love that. I love the humility of that. Because what you're doing is trying to spread joy without there, there, asking for something in return. You're just wanting to spread joy. And there's too much people. There's there's a lot of bad things in the world right now. But I want to be one of those people that in the world they know that they can come to and just enjoy being being rare. That's all. With brony videos, let me let me just pop that in there. With I just drank my videos. water. You nearly made me spit that out. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting. Oh, it's so good. Okay, okay, all right. Three hundred and sixty-five days from today, January seventh is when we're recording this. Twenty twenty-two. Three sixty-five days from today. Where is Angry Scott going to be? What are your goals? Your one-year goal, either whether it be a YouTube or a personal thing, just. Give me something. Where are you going to be in a year in your life, whatever the case? Uh, in my life, probably in school. Uh, I'm, I'm still um, pursuing in college and everything, and that's that's kind of an important thing too. So I know I have to keep up with that. So that's still going to be consistent. Uh, where I see my YouTube channel being, uh, I already set the goal of myself getting 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, let alone. And it's just January, and I know I'm going to hit that. I'm not saying that with the cockiness because I don't think I'm brash or anything. I'm saying that with confidence because I know that I have the ability and I know that I have the, the personality that I can get to that point in in the confidence standards. And I know I'm, I'm going to do that just because I feel like this <sighs> jar of lightning basically throughout my body that says that I, I I have a fire lit under me that will make this happen. And I I see myself, I guess in an analytic wise, I see myself monetized. Where do I see my channel in, in a year? I see it as being a, a, a growing place that people are going to start getting traction to and most likely I'll become an internet meme. So we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> you will be the new pog, by the way. Let's I don't want <laughs> I'm ready for it, man. I got the emote ready. All right, good, good. All right, I love that. Um, Angry Scott, uh, Mason, I love you, dude. I really oh, think man. that the content you're doing is just absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful? It's absolutely wonderful. I think oh, it's so wonderful. It's wonderful. I think, I think what you're accomplishing at your level, at your talent level, is just wonderful. And for context, everyone, he was actually a student at my school and because uh, I'm a high school teacher and took a media arts program and literally started from here and went forward. And it's to see your growth to this point where you're actually getting traction and using your skills and your abilities. It's really heartwarming to me as an educator but as a content creator to see someone else taking that strive and hitting all of those road bumps that, that, that kind of like pull you down sometimes, but you just push through them. It's really inspiring. And I'm really thankful that, uh, that you're making your content. I think it's wonderful. Thank you, man. That really touches my heart in a really good way. It really does. Because that's, that's something that I'll, I'll probably cherish for a good while. Well, good. Well, I think what we'll do here is we'll wrap up. Um, guys, I want to thank you for stopping by. Is there any last minute things you want to say, man? If you're struggling with something in life and if you're not in the best of place, you can also make sure you can, you can talk to people because there are there, there's people in this world that love you and there's people that will always be there for you. And if you don't know, you have anyone else to talk to, just find something that'll make you laugh because there's plenty of things in this world that will do that. And I know if you laugh one day, I promise you, you'll be, you'll be set for the rest of your life. Love it. Love it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Darkness Podcast. Mason, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Guys, I'm Cyrus, and welcome to the darkness. We'll catch you next time.